Hello everyone, welcome and uh, please join me. My name is Jane Burke and I'm going to invite you uh, into my sitting room because I couldn't get the camera quite organised in my kitchen and we're going to make some dinner tonight for uh, for me and my family and we're going to use a slow cooker oh and that was the cat going a bit mad sorry about that yeah as you can see this is this really is my home uh, with a mad cat so yeah we're going to make a vegetarian meal tonight for five people using a slow cooker Slow cookers are incredibly versatile and um, they're very easy. You basically throw your ingredients in and set the dial to, to low, medium or high. And uh, that basically will dictate how long the food needs to cook. I like to give it four hours, so I'm going to cook on a high heat. And tonight, as I say, we're going to use, we're going to make a vegetable hot pot, basically a whole bunch of vegetables. Um, my family, well me and my husband are pretty much vegetarian, I slip occasionally. Um, the kids aren't vegetarian but when they're with us they pretty much end up eating mostly veggies. So we're going to uh, use sweet potato as our stodgy base, that's our carbs. Uh, and we're going to use some mushrooms for protein. Now actually mushrooms balance very very nicely with grain. There's no grain in this but we're having some uh, rice pudding for dinner so that's going to balance out in that way but you could always have a wee slice of bread if you wanted to make sure your proteins got really nicely balanced, balanced <laughs> using the mushrooms. We're also going to use some carrots, we're going to use some Carrots. We're going to use some onions and um, we're going to use some Brussels sprouts because my husband loves Brussels sprouts um, and for some flavouring we're going to use some ginger and some garlic uh, and also uh, I'm going to use a vegetable stock cube and I'm going to use this instead of salt. Uh, there's a, a wide understanding nowadays that too much salt is really not very good for you, it's not good for your heart. So stock cubes actually have a lot of salt in them, so if you use a stock cube there's no need really to use extra salt as well. So we're going to use pepper, ground pepper. I'm going to throw in a little dried chilli just for a little bit of kick and I'm going to have some fennel seeds that I'm going to grind in my pestle and mortar and a little bit of thyme that we grew in our garden as well. So I'm going to start uh, with the sweet potato and let's see if we can get a potato peeler to peel the sweet potato. It's one of these things, sweet potatoes are actually quite difficult to peel so often when I'm peeling them I just use a knife but it seems to be working this time. Sweet potatoes have a slow release they are as you can see orange so um, there are those who say that white carbs are not so good for you but coloured carbs are better so often if you're trying to lose weight or if you are um, trying to eat particularly healthy uh, Trainers, personal trainers and exercise gurus will actually say that sweet potato is a better option for you than the likes of your standard potato uh, or grains indeed. So it's quite nice. It's not to everybody's taste sweet potato. It is sweet, um, which takes a bit of getting used to, you know, if you're eating it as, a, uh, as your main course. It's maybe a slightly unexpected flavour to arrive on your plate. Good, so we're just going to get rid of that for a sec. Lovely, and chop up the sweet potato. And sweet potatoes seem to come in all sorts of sizes. You can get them long and thin, and you can get them like this, really bulbous. Um, I don't think there's really much difference in the flavour, so it's whichever one you're happier to work with. I'm just going to move this 
out of the way. So you can see once you've taken one edge off your sweet potato, you can flip it onto that edge and now it's nice and stable so that you can hold it easily to slice. You really have to put your back into it a bit. And I like to, um, to, to make really quite small chunks just so that it heats and cooks evenly. And the rule of thumb is basically you want everything pretty much to be the same size. It looks nice and it's, it's uh, pleasant in the mouth, but also things tend to cook more easily if everything's the same size. If you have some things that are really big and some things that are really small, the small things cook quickly, the big things cook slower. So you see what I'm doing? I've sliced and I'll turn over and slice again. I'm sure you have your own way of doing this. There we go. Just thinking this is a slow cooker recipe and I am a slow cooker. <laughs> I prepare food really quite slowly. Um, I just like to take my time and to be safe and keep the fingers tucked out of the way when I'm using my knife. Good. Okay. Um, and that's it. Good. Now, normally I would actually uh, saute the onions before I um, go on to put it in the slow cooker, but I have a friend who doesn't bother doing that. And actually, her cooking's just as nice. So if you don't have time to sauté your onions, don't worry. You can just bung them all in. It's fine. But another beauty of using the slow cooker is that the inner, this pot, now I've had it heating just to start. So, but that inner shelf, you can actually place directly onto your hob, as long as it isn't an induction hob. You can do that and uh, you can cook your onions, you can saute your onions with a little bit of oil um, directly in the pot and then obviously using some oven gloves transfer the whole lot straight into your slow cooker device so it means that you're not having to wash extra pots and pans you can get it all done and as I say I'm not going to bother sauteing the onions today I'm a busy working mother <laughs> so I'm just going to chuck it all in to the slow cooker okay so might be slightly slightly beneficial to to do the onions first but this is fine no problem in it goes If you were a bit more savvy than me, you could just pick up the chopping board and slide them all in with your knife, but never mind. <laughs> okay, so that's your sweet potato, that's the base done, that's your sort of um, carbohydrate ready. Now we are going to have a look at the onions. And onions, I think, are just such a wonderful base for any savoury food. They give it a little bit of substance. And once they're cooked, really, they, they uh, disappear and just add a bit of flavour and texture. Um, I've had my kids telling me that they don't particularly like onions, but they don't notice that it's in the cooking, even when they do. You know, uh, they just melt into the background. So unless you're putting a plate of onion rings in front of them, they seem perfectly happy. I know people do that a lot if they're cooking for children and the children don't particularly like vegetables. You make vegetable soup and whiz it up and they don't even know what's there. It's just tasty soup. Um, but I like to... I like my vegetables still to have a shape, that they are still recognisable. At least if you if you give them a good look. Good. Okay. So yeah, onions are fantastic. They have that little bit of flavour. Um, I know certain uh, Buddhist 
uh, friends don't eat onions. They consider them to be aphrodisiac, that they uh, inspire passion in the body. Honestly, I haven't noticed that in myself. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's quite difficult then when you're cooking for for your Buddhist friends who don't want onions or garlic. Um, obviously, that's if that's what they need, that's what they need. Um, but I, I do must I must admit I do like using both onions and garlic in my cooking. Uh, when I did a little bit of uh, yoga back in the day, I did some yoga cooking cooking classes. Uh, I suppose sort of on the Ayurvedic um, scale of things, the Indian knowledge of nutrition. And uh, the teacher there said that when you cook with onions, you should also use garlic and ginger. And the three together balance each other very nicely and help sort of balance the various energies in your body. And certainly from um, living in a Chinese household for quite some time, I noticed that onion, garlic and ginger are always put together. And they would often then add chilli as well. So they certainly do, they taste good together. Oops. Uh, and even if I didn't have fresh onion, or sorry, fresh garlic or ginger, you can get lovely wee pots nowadays um, with it pre-prepared in vinegar. And it's probably cheaper just to buy the, the fresh fruit um, or the fresh vegetables. But it's nice actually to have a wee pot of the, the preserved onion, um, garlic and ginger in your pantry. And they do, um, they do chilli peppers as well like that uh, in vinegar. And they pre preserve the taste and I think they preserve a lot of the goodness as well. From having done herbal studies a lot of the wee ointments and medicines that you would make using herbs, you use vinegar. It pickles it, but it also draws out the, the good stuff from, from the various herbs. And I love vinegar. Vinegar's good. So it's actually something that I forgot <laughs> to bring in here. I would add a slurp of vinegar to this. Um, yeah, I'll just cut up all of these onions first before I open the lid. Just a wee bin down there. But I would put a wee slurp of vinegar. I would even possibly put a slurp of cooking wine as well. Just a little bit. Um, and maybe even some sesame oil and just a little drizzle of sesame oil. And that's just a kickback from the days when uh, I lived in a Chinese household. And again, you'd put a little bit of vinegar, a little bit of cooking wine, a little bit of sesame oil in practically everything as you cooked. And they'd also use soy sauce, of course. And soy sauce gives a lot of flavour, but again, it's full of salt. So I think if you are using um, your veggie stock cubes, or any stock cube, you would not need soy sauce as well. For the same reason, it's already full of salt, so it's just not necessary. So you can see I'm using three small onions. You could use one big onion, <laughs> that's fine. And you can play with the, the amounts depending on your taste. Uh, all this onion really does disappear to nothing, you know, it's, it goes into the background. It gives a nice earthy flavour without overwhelming. Of course, if you were to eat it raw, it would be really strong. But um, when it's cooked, it's just... Just giving a nice background to everything else. I can see one of my kids is arriving home. Hopefully he won't walk in here, but I'll soon let him know. 
Hello? Yeah, excuse me a sec. Hello, uh, we're back again. So this is the second half of the video. I just paused so that we didn't have a, a youngster walking in and getting shocked at the video. So yes, we are continuing with our veggie hot pot. And I'm just finishing cutting my onions. Have to always remember child safety, yeah. But they don't want to be on a video unless they've agreed. Oh. I just avoid videoing or photographing children altogether for fear of making a mistake. Okay, so we've got our onions and we're going to bung them in with our sweet potato. As I say, really you could saute the onions first and that would be very nice. But I'm being lazy today. It still gives a good result even without sauteing them. Good, so that's us. Good, now there's one ingredient that I didn't mention and that was tomatoes. And tomatoes I find just to give a very, I don't know, they, they're just, they just make things tasty, you don't think? <laughs> People love the taste of tomatoes. So yeah, you can use your tomatoes fresh, um, like so. But this is my secret ingredient. It's called passata, tomato passata. So this is basically tomatoes smooshed into a, uh, into a paste. Um, I think they remove the skins, which is perfect for me as I have some digestive issues and tomato skins really run amok. They can um, just, oh, even talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I burp. Um, yeah, it's it's not tomato skins aren't really the best for anyone with um with major um, digestive issues. But passata is lovely because they've taken the skins off and they've smooshed them up, so it's a, a nice option and it's quick and easy. Of course, fresh fruit is always good to use, um, but this is nice. Nice. Uh, so I think I mentioned mushrooms. Yes, I did. Okay, so before I go any further, I'm going to add water to my slow cooker. So I'm going to allow everything already to start going. And as I say, because it's a slow cooker, it is quite forgiving. You know, you don't have to um, freak out about getting everything in quickly. It's not like your sizzling pan that, you know, seconds in the wrong direction and all of a sudden it's ruined. No, a slow cooker, you can just take your time, add things in. It is hot, it's heating, but it's not going to freak your system out. Excellent, all right. So next I'm going to uh, work on my Brussels sprouts. Now, Brussels sprouts, <laughs> I think people either love them or hate them. And I know that often uh, they just keep it for Christmas and that's it. But as I say, my husband absolutely loves Brussels sprouts. I quite like them actually. I've got used to liking them. There's something about the brassica family, um, which is the cabbage family. And Brussels sprouts belong to the cabbage family. And it's turned out, um, scientists have come up with this thing that... Uh, you either have taste buds that can can pick up on certain flavors in Brussels sprouts or in cabbage, which means that you enjoy cabbage, or uh, certain genetic makeup can actually just make you feel that it, yuck, that it's not particularly nice, that uh, it has a sort of um, boiled sock <laughs> smell or flavor. Luckily, I'm of the uh, genetic code that um, that appreciates cabbage. I really enjoy the taste of cabbage. So, um, and obviously my husband is the same. My mum, on the other hand, does not like cabbage. She does have, um, what would you call it, coleslaw. She'd make coleslaw and enjoy that, but cooked cabbage, she's just not keen on. And we're, you know, the same family, but isn't that the way that, um, 
genetics does not necessarily mean that everyone in your family is the same. And thank goodness for that. <laughs> so Brussels sprouts, I'm sure you know how to how to um how to prepare them. Um the way I do it, I chop their bottoms off and often the outer parts just fall away, which is great. I'm not the keenest on preparing Brussels sprouts, I'll admit, because it takes a bit of effort. I mean, this is all it is, it's just chopping a few bottoms off and then shelling, but it can be a bit of a drudge. But anyway, it's worth it in the end. They are nice and tasty. It, they do seem to, as all the brassica family, they do seem to have a bit of a gassy effect on the body. So, um, you know, if you do find yourself passing gas um, after having had Brussels sprouts or any cabbage, it's normal. <laughs> um, even, you know, if you're taking all the right um, probiotics and everything else, just fermenting cabbage when it's, you know, when it's fermenting in your tummy, when it's going through the digestive process, the good bacteria just produce gas and that's all there is to it. So you have to be prepared um, if you're going to eat boiled cabbage or cooked cabbage. You might get a bit windy. So it's maybe not something that you would uh, have if you're having a romantic night in with your loved one or at least until you've got comfortable with each other. Um, but. Uh, very, very good for you. The greens are so good for you. It's really important to get some leafy greens into your diet. And they're relatively affordable. Um, but uh, there are nutrients in there that you just don't get in the other colours. You know what they say, eat the rainbow. You want all the different colours of the rainbow. And I certainly find if I go for even a few days without greens, I really feel off, you know, I'm, I'm wanting them, I'm sort of craving them. You see the mountain of um, external <laughs> leaves that I created just by shelling the Brussels sprouts, leaving just these little footballs. Um, so when I go to, uh, to buy Brussels sprouts, I always look for big Brussels sprouts because it's the same amount of work, whether you're working on a small one or a big one. And yet, if you're working on little Brussels sprouts, you end up with practically nothing left by the time you've shelled them. So I know it depends on what's left in the store. Uh, and you see, I'm just cutting them in half, but a big one like this, um, I would probably cut into quarters. Again, just so that everything's about the same size and that'll all cook um, in the same time. We don't want some stuff that's really well cooked and others that's still raw. And that happened to me the other day that I just did a quick roast uh, and I was using fennel and carrot and various things. Um, but I was I threw beans on top, I was just oh, I'll just chuck it all in, it'll be fine. And some of it was beautifully cooked and other parts not. So um yeah. So let's just pop a carrot in. So you want everything. You'll know yourself. If something is a root vegetable, it needs a bit more cooking than a leafy vegetable. Uh, so um, as I say, the, the slow cooker is, is really quite forgiving. Uh, but if you're roasting things, you can't expect, you know, beans, which are small, to cook at the same time. As, as a nice thick piece of vegetable. So my beans were absolutely cremated and my vegetables were still raw. Well, it was my own fault, I was just being lazy. So you can see a carrot tapers, can't you? So this end is like half the size of this end. So what I do, I tend to cut the thick end in half and leave the thin end as it is and then slice. And there's all different ways of cutting carrots. I was always fascinated um, by my Chinese family who made you know these kind of 
little thin sticks. Um, because from from being a local girl, the way we would cut carrots, you just dum 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 like that, and you get circles. But I actually quite like the thin sticks. I think it's pleasing in the mouth. And actually, the shape of the food that goes into your mouth does affect the flavour. Now, as I say, if I had been wise. I would have taken my garlic and my ginger and I would have used the inner lining uh, on the hob to, to roast them first before, before I did the rest of the cooking. But I wasn't wise, but that's okay. I will pause the video here and I will go and do that when the time comes. I will roast them on a separate pan. So. Do as I say and not as I do <laughs> for this particular um, project. Good, so there you go. So I'm not actually going to cut up uh, tomatoes uh, for this. I'm going to use the passata because it's easier, it's quicker, and um, I've used a lot of your time already. So uh, yeah, so let's move on to the fennel seeds. And fennel seeds uh, look a bit like they're about the same size as rice. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, they're about the same size and shape as rice. So um, the feedback that my husband gave me in like, cooking in the past was that he didn't like having seeds that were sort of um, distinguishable in the food. He felt it just, it just didn't, didn't work for him. So what I find is if I grind up the seeds, it helps to release the flavour, uh, but it also helps to make the, the texture in the mouth less obvious. Um, so actually just giving them a quick grind in the pestle and mortar, and that just takes, takes that issue away. And I'm left with a happy husband eating his dinner. So I'm just going to chuck that in. That is a it's like a level uh, dessert spoonful of fennel and fennel has a lovely flavor it's quite like aniseed um, and it's very good for digestion so again i like to use it because i have digestive issues um, i can't eat everything i'm not, not so sure if I would go as far as say celiac, but I have gluten issues and all sorts of things. So, um, yeah, so a little bit of fennel, a little bit of ginger goes a long way. Okay, so I'm just getting the, uh, the passata ready. I can pop that aside now. Good. And... Just be careful always when you're opening these things. Um, probably use scissors. If you're using a knife, do be careful because it's too easy to slip. So uh, for a meal for five, I would probably use about half a carton of tomato passata. Um, so that's it's 500 grams, so about 250 grams of passata is plenty. Uh, and I would use one stock cube, so I'm using one vegetable stock cube. Have a look at the various stock cubes. They have different, um, there's different brands, and some of them um, would attract me more than others. I try to go for ones that are um, low in chemicals, basically, you know, any preservatives and things. The one I'm using here, um, I think it's from Lidl. Um, but actually some of the big brands, they're not necessarily the best either. You get uh, organic stock cubes, which are nice. But just do your own research and see what one suits you. Now quite often I just like to chop up my stock cube. You can just, you know, sprinkle it in. But I like to just give it a wee chop and it just makes it easier to get it across the um, across the food. 
if you don't want to have your food and you're eating it thinking gosh this isn't well seasoned at all and then all of a sudden you get a lump of salty mush so better to just distribute it evenly and once I've got everything finished and in there I'll give it a wee stir before I leave it for its cooking. So we're nearly there, we just want to add some thyme. Thyme, you get all different kinds of thyme, this is a quite lemony thyme and again I would say about a, um, a dessert spoon full is plenty. Again it's adding to taste and this is as I say grown in the garden but we dried it. You could always use fresh thyme as well. Good okay and then we're going to go on to uh, the garlic. Now I'm going to, do you know what, <laughs> no we'll do some mushrooms first while I remember. Um, yeah. You know, doing this kind of thing gives you real respect to the folks who do this stuff professionally. So there's so much to think about, not cluttering the space and uh, making things visible for the folks watching. So uh, it's not just skilled cooks, they, they really they know how to, how to do their thing. Again, I'm just cutting everything to about the same size. And it just, it's good cooking protocol, but it also just looks and feels better in the mouth. Excuse me a wee sec while I blow my nose. Thank you. I'll just sanitise my hands here. But so do remember when you are washing, especially nowadays, there's just so many um, bugs out there, but always when you're cooking, keep your hands clean. Funny how cooking goes, isn't it? If we're doing it every day, you'll go through periods where you have just so much fun in the kitchen and feel inspired and happy that you're feeding your family and it's all going well. And then sometimes you're just like, oh, I've had enough of this. And completely uninspired. It's happened to me, happened to me the other day, which is why I ended up just bunging stuff in the oven um, and it not working out at all. So um, anything that just gives you a wee spark, a wee bit of inspiration, makes you feel, yeah, let's try that. And even just one ingredient changing, for example, having a go with um, thyme, can make such a difference. I have it on high, I do, <laughs> just checking. Good. Okay, so this is filling up quite nicely. This wee pot is perfect, really, for uh, for a family of five. Um, it's going to make us a decent meal. Uh, I don't think I could stretch it for for a sixth person, um, but I'm happy with uh, with my ingredients in there now. So finally, I'm going to just do my garlic and ginger and throw my chili in. So, I don't know if you can hear that, we seeds inside the chilli pepper. So I could just throw, throw the whole chilli pepper in um, and just scoop it out at the end. But what I think I will do is slice it open and remove the seeds. And I've heard from watching folks... Um, that it's not actually the seeds that give the heat, but that little film um, between the chilli and the seeds. But in this 
dried little pepper I can't see any film at all but you know do be ever so careful when you're working with chili because the oil is flipping hot <laughs> and if you touch any mucous membranes like your eyes or your nose or heaven forbid you forget to wash your hands and go to the bathroom you could really end up feeling the burn so I'm going to keep it as a solid and I'm going to fish it out at the end. I'm just going to throw that in just to give a little bit of extra boom. Okay. And bring my board. Good. Okay. So yeah, now we come to the garlic. Now I've got hold of these single clove garlics. So this whole thing is just one, uh, one bulb uh, as opposed to your normal garlic. I can actually not see my normal garlic. Oh, there it is. Yeah, nor, or I say normal, the ones that you often see, which are all of these segmented, uh, almost like... Um, Uh, like orange segments um, and they're grand you know they're absolutely fine these ones I got them in little again um, and these are great just from the point of view that they're so quick you can just slice them open and peel them and, and that's it it's done so uh, none of this crushing business to get the skin off um, Having said that, of course, now I'm doing it in front of a camera and it's flicking away. But can you see that's it? It's just one clove. I've cut it in half, but that's all the one bulb. Um, so that's really nice and quick. And it's a taste of garlic. You know, it's the same. You can crush it up and you can put it through one of your wee garlic ricer things. Um, just the same. But look how easy was that. I didn't have to squash it or anything like that so I'm going to put a couple of garlics in but as I say if I'd had my wits about me I would have prepared the garlic first and the ginger and the onions but I didn't and unlike the onions that I'm prepared to just throw in I am going to give these a wee flash fry so if I had thought about it properly I would have done it in the lining of the slow cooker but put it down to the nerves of standing in front of a camera I just didn't think so I'm going to slice up my garlic there we go. and ginger so always keeping the, the fingers pulled out of the way and I like nice and relatively small bits so this is the slight maybe drawback of having a single clove that you have bigger chunks to slice up but just so that you don't get a massive um, lump of garlic in your mouth well, some people love that actually um, I've taken to putting whole garlic cloves into my um, roasts when I throw vegetables into roast and they're lovely especially with rosemary they go nice and sweet and soggy they're like a little vegetable obviously you know alongside with uh, whatever other vegetables potatoes carrots fennel good so here we are and two cloves really has produced quite a lot you can see that quite a lot of garlic it does have a slightly different texture to the, as I say, the garlic that you normally see in the shop. 
So I'm going to cut up just a little bit of ginger. How are you doing? You're still there? <laughs> See what I mean? I'm a slow cooker, but a good meal deserves a little bit of time taken. And again, I want relatively small pieces of ginger so that everything is much the same. Great. So I'm going to go and flash fry that just for a second and then add it to my pot. And we've got our thyme and fennel already in and we've got our stock cubes in. Uh, so no salt, no more salt than that. I'm going to add a little bit of pepper, ground black pepper. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Um, yeah. So pepper is nice. It's just warming. It has its own flavour, and it helps the body to absorb the other nutrients. So I'm going to flash fry this. I'm going to pause the video, and I'll be back in a second. And uh, we're nearly done. Well, here we are, flash fried onions and, er, sorry, not onions, garlic and ginger. And we're going to add that to our dish. Yeah. Excellent. So, we have a load of vegetables in here. We have sweet potatoes, we have onions, we have carrot, we have Brussels sprouts, we have mushrooms, and we have tomato, passata, And onion, garlic, ginger, a little bit of chilli, a vegetable stock cube, a little bit of fennel and water and some black pepper to taste. And that is us. Now I'm going to leave this for four hours and in four hours time when everyone gets home dinner will be ready. So it should be tasty, it's full of good nutrients, very cheap, without any meat and um, these vegetables. I think the whole lot there would have cost less than five pounds actually to put together. Mm, maybe slightly, slightly more than five pounds depending on where you shopped. So uh, give it a go. I will share a photograph and report back to how it tastes. And I wish you all happy cooking and best of health. Thanks very much.